an interesting word, one specific word, a six letter word that I find very interesting. It's change. We all want someone else to change. If they just see our point of view, they can change. They can awaken to who they truly are and this relationship will be golden. If you're in a relationship right now and hoping the other person will change and wake up to the truth, you can't miss this video. Hi friends, Ashley Burgess back today. And today we're talking about certain specific situations you'll find yourself in if you're in an addicted or toxic relationship. And this specific situation is about change. If you stick around long enough, eventually the other person will see your point of view and they'll make much needed changes they need to make to their life to make this relationship successful. Okay, so in today's video, I wanna talk about the fallacies in that and the situation that we find ourselves in and how this usually isn't going to work. The first thing that we wanna realize is that we can only change ourselves, okay? Legitimately, the only person that you have jurisdiction on changing is you, okay? We might think that we can change the other person, we might think that we can impart knowledge into the other person. Now, if you were dealing with a healthy relationship where both people were healthy and mindful and taking responsibility for their own actions, they can learn from one another. So if you knew something that I didn't know, I can learn from you and vice versa. I can change certain systems of thought or maybe even small little belief tweaks based on new knowledge and factual information. And I don't feel weird about it. I don't feel bombarded by it. And I don't feel like my power is being taken away because it's a healthy relationship. Okay. In an unhealthy relationship, in a toxic relationship, what happens is we feel as though our point of view, if we're the health, let's just say you feel like you're the healthier person in the relationship because neither one is healthy. I mean, I'm just being honest with you as far as in this particular relationship. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in it, okay? We don't go into codependent relationships. We don't go into angry relationships or violent relationships if we feel like we're a deserving individual, okay? And so there's a self-respect, self-care, self-worth dynamic that usually needs to be worked out with that hasn't been worked out by either person. It also could be a savior dynamic too. Somebody that wants to save the other person, they think they can. Again, you can't save or change somebody. Uh, it's just the way it is. But what happens is you get into this relationship and the ego, your ego has you believing that if you say the right thing and if you say specific knowledge and explain that the other person will change, okay? And it's like we're focusing on the wrong change. And what I mean by that is instead of focusing on changing ourselves, we're focusing on how to change them. Now the battle in a toxic relationship is that one person is usually never gonna take responsibility for their actions, okay? Everything they do, no matter how hateful it is, is based on something that you did to trigger them, okay? Not the fact that they did it themselves, not taking responsibility for their actions, but you made them do this, okay? And if you continue to stay in a relationship that the other person keeps telling you that you made them do something, that's kind of your own fault. Because the thing is, is that you're actually holding out for the fact that they're going to wake up one day, ding, 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 and they're going to go, you know what? You were right this whole time. I do need to get help. I do need to take responsibility for my actions. And you know what? I'm going to do that today. Okay? What I found is that that's what we're waiting for. We'll wait our whole lives for that. When in reality, we got to get real with ourselves. Okay? Why am I in this relationship? This person where there is violence or anger or something that they're not dealing with is not going to deal with it. They will not accept responsibility. Even if you bring it up to them time after time, they get very angry with you, resentful, even violent in nature. You need to step back and ask yourself, why are you staying in this relationship? I realize it's addictive. I realize it's toxic, but we can't change other people. Do you see what I'm saying? It's glaringly obvious that we think we can. And part of it's ego, but a big part of it is the fact that we think that eventually they're going to come around, that eventually it's going to work. And I'm here to tell you today that there are some relationships that are not ever going to work. 
And there is an entire lesson to be learned from that particular relationship. And if you found yourself in cycles of different relationships that have the same characteristics, you have to realize that this is a lesson that you haven't let yet learned. Okay, so I have a lot of clients that come in that talk about their relationship with somebody suffering with BPD and how they feel that eventually that person might understand where they're coming from and make the changes that they need to and the relationship will work out. Well, until somebody's willing to take responsibility for their actions and understand where the anger is coming from or begin to try to process that, there's nothing you can do when somebody's on autopilot. And I know that you want the relationship to work, but you really have to ask yourself, is this really a fundamentally good relationship or am I addicted to this relationship like a drug? And in many of these relationships, we're so addicted to the drama, we're so addicted to the emotional roller coaster, and we're so addicted to something else like either the drama or the sex or the com combination of all those components together that we're actually fooling ourselves to actually think that this relationship will work. And so it's time to really step back and ask yourself, is it the other person that needs to change or do I need to make changes and find my way out of this relationship to begin to understand who I truly am because I have actually been through this cycle before. It's a different person, but same characteristics. Okay, so let's focus the change on ourselves and realize that not every relationship's going to be good. A failed relationship is not a big deal, but the only failed relationship that is a big deal is when we fail to have the relationship with ourselves, okay? And the more and more codependent, unhealthy, dramatic relationships we find ourselves in, the more potential we have for losing ourselves, losing our identity, and become addicted to something that not only will hold us back from who we truly are, but will actually keep us from our truth of finding our true self and living our true life. I hope this video has helped you, and if you like the video, please give us a like, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel today, as well as adding a comment on this video. If you've gone through the situation and you've awakened up to the fact that it's time for you to change, I'd love to hear about the awakening and how you did it and what you learned after you left that relationship. Very powerful stuff. And you know what I'm going to say when I end this video. Don't forget to live your true life.